America's landscape is changing, not only with its towering skyscrapers, but also with a rising number of empty office spaces. With almost 1 billion square feet of unoccupied office space across the country, the scale of this issue is staggering. If these vacant spaces were stacked into a single, towering structure, it would surpass the height of the Himalayas, the highest mountain range on Earth. This extraordinary situation highlights a growing crisis in the American real estate market, with office owners defaulting on loans and vacancies skyrocketing. In this video, we will uncover the implications of abandoned office towers and examine the potential risks faced by banks. Moreover, we will shed light on the strategies being employed to tackle this crisis and explore the key factors that can help certain offices thrive in these challenging times. It all begins with the disheartening news of Brookfield, one of America's largest office owners, defaulting on a colossal $161 million loan. This unsettling event is not isolated, as other prominent players in the office sector, such as Blackstone and WeWork, have also succumbed to the burdens of mounting office debt this year. To gain a better understanding of the situation, let's examine the facts. Data from JLL reveals that the United States currently grapples with nearly 1 billion square feet of empty office space. As of the first quarter of 2023, an astonishing 963 million square feet of office space lay vacant, painting a vivid picture of the magnitude of the crisis. Astonishingly, between 5 and 10 office towers are at risk of defaulting each month, sounding alarm bells for the industry. New York City, a global business hub, bears the weight of approximately 76 million square feet of empty office space, a staggering figure that, if stacked into a single building, would stretch an astounding 7 miles into the atmosphere. To put this into perspective, in 2019, the office sector accounted for roughly one-third of all jobs in the city, underscoring the significance of the crisis in terms of employment and economic activity. Following closely in New York's footsteps is Washington, D.C., where a vacancy rate of 21% looms over the city, a figure that exceeds the typically healthy threshold by a substantial 8%. Remote work trends have prompted occupiers to downsize, while some office buildings have undergone conversion into residential properties in an attempt to curb the vacancy rates. Venturing beyond the East Coast, we find San Francisco grappling with its own set of challenges. With a vacancy rate surpassing 26%, a significant leap from the pre-pandemic rate of 4%, the city faces an uphill battle. Notably, even industry giants like Salesforce have walked away from downtown towers, leaving a void that spans 104,000 square feet. The convergence of rising interest rates and surging vacancies has dealt a severe blow to U.S. office markets, leaving many cities vulnerable to an uptick in empty spaces. Richard Barkham, the global chief economist at CBRE Group, predicts a staggering 30% decline in office building valuations by 2023, further underscoring the magnitude of the crisis. Beyond the world of real estate, the repercussions of this crisis extend to the banking sector, with potential losses looming on the horizon. Small and regional banks, which constitute the majority of U.S. office loans, face an especially perilous situation. Recent stress tests conducted by the Federal Reserve indicate that a 40% decline in commercial property values could translate into a jaw-dropping $65 billion loss for big banks on their commercial loan portfolios. Fortunately, many larger banks have robust capital reserves, fortified by measures implemented after the global financial crisis. However, smaller banks face a different reality. With higher loan concentrations and less stringent reserve requirements, they run the risk of credit rating downgrades and increased credit losses should their loan portfolios deteriorate. Banks with exposure to markets marked by high vacancy rates, such as San Francisco, Houston, and Washington, D.C., face heightened risks that are further compounded by the implications of higher interest rates. The rising interest rates have cast a dark shadow over smaller banks, hampering their ability to issue new loans and constraining their balance sheets. 
Consequently, the commercial real estate transaction volume is projected to plummet by 27% in 2023, contributing to a decline in property prices. To mitigate the impact, some banks have taken proactive measures, offering extensions on existing loan terms and restructuring debts. By negotiating new loan agreements, they aim to prevent widespread foreclosures that could devastate their commercial loan portfolios. This echoes the strategies employed during the global financial crisis when short-term extensions were prevalent. However, foreclosures may still loom on the horizon if loan restructuring fails to align with financial feasibility. As the crisis unfolds, there is a limit to the number of banks willing to extend loan terms and wait for uncertainty to subside. Offices that are well-positioned to weather the storm will possess attributes such as superior quality, prime locations, diverse tenant rosters, and robust financing structures. The fate of these empty office spaces remains uncertain, casting a shadow over the future of our cities and posing challenges to the broader economy. And that wraps up our video exploring the crisis of empty office spaces in America. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.